and welcome to this week's episode of Facebook Friday. My name is Eric Hammond of The Orange Stack and thanks for following along each week as we uncover how to do more in your business. This video series that we do every single week, Fridays, 10 a.m. Pacific, is really about you, the real estate agent, and maximizing your opportunities. Today we're talking about business growth and that's really the focus of this channel. We, we uncover different strategies, different tools, mindsets, everything that you can to really grow your business and do the most that you can with your real estate career. I know that some agents will sell one or two houses this year and some agents will sell four or five hundred homes this year. So the sky's the limit is really up to you and what you're able to do with the talents and opportunities that exist. So as the title shows on today's show, we want to talk about being a big fish in a little pond. And you're probably wondering what the heck does this have to do with real estate? When I was living in Utah, I had a really good friend of mine, Matt Atkinson. Thanks, Matt, for helping me think about this opportunity. When I was in Utah and doing real estate, I've been flipping houses for a few years and I got to know the community. It's a small community. There's a lot of investors there, but they all know each other and all the big real estate agents know each other. And if you're anything to do with real estate, you know who the top guys are. And there's some phenomenal real estate agents out there. So whether you're investing or selling retail transactions or whatever you're doing, you just kind of get to know the community and everything that's going on there. When I was moving to San Diego, my friend said, you know, you're not a big fish yet, but you're becoming a bigger fish in this little pond. Do you want to go be a small fish in a really big pond? Meaning that San Diego has 3 million people in the whole county, which is way bigger than the whole entire state of Utah. And when you're just starting out in a real estate career in a new area, it's challenging to get to know people and have them be aware of who you are. So I was thinking about that the other day, thinking about the top agent in San Diego and thinking about how many people actually know who this is. Kyle Whistle is who one of the top one or two agents usually is. There's a couple that kind of go back and forth every couple years who sell the most amount of homes throughout the county of San Diego. And Kyle's a great guy. I know him. I met him a long time ago through a Tom Ferry event and just an incredible agent. Does a lot, has incredible team and highly respected. So Kyle, if you would ask anybody in the area who the number one real estate agent is in San Diego County as a whole, they probably would have no idea who Kyle is. You know, even though Kyle spends a lot of money on branding, he's marketed himself all over social media. It's just not something that you're aware, with, aware of, but in a smaller pond like Utah, you know who the top agents are. You know who the big guys are who sell most homes. You probably even know the top five agents who sell most homes just because the community is smaller. So I wanted to talk today about you know, being in the farm or the pond that you work in and really how to maximize the opportunities that you have while you're there. And if you're just starting out and you sell, you know, two or three homes a year, or you've been doing this for 20 years and you're still only selling a handful of homes, let's help you guys focus today on how to find that small pond so that you can be the big fish in that area and really benefit from the opportunities that you have of marketing and really helping people understand who you are as a real estate agent. Okay. So the advantages of being in a small pond is that you can take market share. Um, I have another agent that I'm working with right now who's moving to a new area. Not like he's moving, but he's starting to work in a new area geographically. And I was asking him, you know, I said, who are the top agents in this area and what kind of volume are they doing? And we ran a, a poll around the area and looked on the MLS basically and found out, you know, who's got the biggest market share. In this area of about probably a little over 200 homes, no agent has sold more than three properties in a 12 month period, which means that there's a lot of opportunity there to take your chunk of the market share. So, you know, if an agent moved into this area and sold, say, 20 homes, that's a 10% ish market share, which is pretty good for a, an area that big it's not that hard to go sell 10 homes. And so we're gonna help him focus on just being the the really big agent in this little area of 200 homes. It's a couple zip codes, maybe like four or five zip codes. And he just has the opportunity to capture the market share, which means that he can mail postcards to the owners of that area. He can do radio ads if he really wants to. I'm not having him focus on that. He can have you know local advertisements in the local paper around there. He can have social media ads, which is what we're helping him do. He can retarget the people in that area. There's so much that you can do to just bring that brand awareness and be everywhere. However, the other side of it is you can market over the whole county and you can say, hey, everybody in the whole entire county, here's me, pick me, I'm the best real estate agent. Your marketing dollars just only go so far. So he's got a budget to be able to reach that whole entire community and everybody there and everybody can hear his message several times a year. But if he tried to spread that message out through an entire county of a huge size, it's really hard to get your marketing dollar to go that big. You know, obviously if you're a big team and you're selling 500 homes, you have the ability 
do that. But let me rewind and talk to you about my experience. When we were selling homes in San Diego County, we sold about 200 homes per year and we covered the whole entire county. And I guarantee I could talk to any homeowner around here. Most agents even had never heard of us. We were in the top five real estate teams of selling volume wise in this whole area and nobody heard of our team. It's just because it's a big area. However, if we would have focused on one pretty good sized area, we could have had complete dominance and covered that whole entire area. Which means that when friends and relatives and family members in that area go to sell their properties, they're gonna think of you. You know, I live in a community here where there's been dozens of homes that have sold. We weren't able to get any of them because they were looking for the cheap agent who's willing to do it for like 1%, so we just weren't interested in taking those listings. But the problem is, is that nobody knows me because we didn't market to this area because we're trying to spread this blanket over the whole entire county. So some of the suggestions that I would have when you're coming up with your farm and your community and the area that you wanna focus on is to start small. You know, some of you guys are saying, look, I'm willing to go anywhere. I'll drive 45 minutes in every single direction. I just wanna take a listing. That's great and I'm glad that you're at least able to do something. But by being everywhere and all over, no one's gonna know who you are. So you're gonna miss out on the opportunities to have a little community that you can market to over and over and over and month after month and just be that consistent presence there. There's actually an agent in uh, my community here who's doing a pretty good job of that. He probably sends us a postcard that's you know, 13, 14 inches wide by about eight inches tall. And we'll get, I would say over a six month period of time, I'll probably get 10 postcards from him. It's either just listed or coming on the market or we're having a big open house like this weekend being uh, Labor Day. He sent out a card because he does these big three, four day open houses. He's doing a really good job of building this area and I don't know how big he's going geographically, um, but he does a really good job of kind of owning this farm. And that's the opportunity that you have. So if you're starting to focus and you get a listing in one area, start small, pick that community, whether it's 500 homes or 5,000 homes, come up with a budget that works for that area and just start growing. So start out small and figure out what it is that you're doing and keep it simple, okay? Don't try, this is kind of ties into some of my other tips here, but if you're gonna be on social media, don't go get an ad in the newspaper, don't go get on the radio, don't go circle call everywhere, don't go knock on doors, don't do everything at once, just keep it simple. Keep it to one marketing tactic. So if you're gonna mail out flyers, just mail out flyers. If you're gonna door knock, just door knock. You probably don't have the ability when you're first starting out to hit every single marketing aspect that you have. And if you do, you're probably not gonna have enough money to reach the farm that you pick. Let's just take 500 homes, right? That would probably cost you about $500 to send a postcard to all of them. So that's $500. And you should probably do this about every other month on the minimum, if not every single month, just to keep that exposure going, to remind people who you are, to get that turnover. And the question too is, is there enough turnover in a 500 home neighborhood to have the volume that you're looking for? So if you're gonna do that for $500 every single month, plus you're gonna go try to door knock, plus you're gonna go try to call, which calling and door knocking is pretty affordable, so maybe that's a bad example, but you know, let's think of other uh, ways that you can market that might cost more money, such as a radio ad or billboard, or, you know, even the little signs at the grocery store that cost a lot of money and you could pick a couple of grocery stores in that area, you're starting to spend a lot of money just for that little teeny area. So it'd be better to just focus on one marketing tactic and kind of spread that out to a little bit bigger of an area, maybe a thousand or 2000 homes, something like that, and have something that you can get rolling better. So I don't suggest spending your budget on a postcard just because of the cost of it. And I don't even suggest suggest using social media if you have a tight budget. What I would suggest is door knocking, which is free, it just takes a lot of time, or even picking up the phone and calling. You could probably have a budget of about $100 a month, which would cover all of your calling needs, it would cover buying all the phone numbers, it would cover you being on the phone for you know three or four hours a day and being able to just plow through all those numbers and call these people and just say, hey, I'm in real estate, I'm buying, selling, helping people invest in real estate, who do you know that wants to buy or sell? And just go from there. It's a free phone call for you, you just gotta spend the money to have the phone system and buy all the, the actual phone numbers. So that's the best way to kind of get into it and start with something simple like that. The next thing I would have you focus on, which I love this book, it's called The One Thing, right? It's written by Gary Keller. Love Gary Keller's books. He's got some really good content in there. I tell you to go read this book if you haven't read it already. It applies to real estate completely, but it also applies to a lot of other businesses. He talks about, you know, really identifying uh, what the things that you need to accomplish immediately, whether it's 10 things or 100 things, but bring it down to one thing that if you do that one thing is going to bring you the most amount of business that you can. Try to forget two through 99 uh, if you have to. Think about what that one thing is that you can do that's going to bring you business right now. And maybe it's phone calling, maybe it's door knocking, maybe it's, you know, joining a BNI 
or being president of the Chamber of Commerce, whatever it is. Go find the one thing right now that's gonna bring you the most business and again, keep it simple, okay? The other thing I would tell you, uh, which is I guess tip number three, kind of depending on where we are here, is focusing on your strengths, okay? I think a lot of people will try to do everything that they can in the real estate business, which is good. And when you're in the beginning, you might have to. You might have to be the secretary and the assistant and the real estate agent and the showing agent and write all your contracts and be the TC. But if you can delegate all that kind of stuff, the better you're off you're going to be. So find out what your strengths are, which leads into tip four, which is delegate. So we'll kind of merge these two together. When I got into real estate, I realized really quickly what I was good at and what I was not good at. I was really good at being on the phone. I could sit there for eight hours a day and call, 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 call and lock up appointment after appointment after appointment. What I wasn't great at doing was going out and being face to face with somebody because I was the personality who just wanted to go to the next one. So having a eight year old lady show me around her house for two hours and tell me about all the unique things that had happened to that home and I just had a hard time being in that type of a situation. Some of you guys are a lot more patient than I, than I am and you can sit there for three hours and hear that story over and over and over and just connect with them and relate to them and feel like they're listening to you and then be able to lock that deal up and go on to the next one and do it all over again. I have a hard time with that. That's not me. I'm more the business person, the behind the numbers, the analytics, the run the numbers, the maximize your opportunity kind of person. So what happened to me is I found that I need to go find the person who's good at meeting with the individual and that became my partner. So I would partner up with people and say, hey, you go meet with a client, I'll lock you up and go get you there. And, and it worked out. So figure out what your strengths are. You know, are you the people person? Are you the numbers person? Are you the guy who stays in the office or the gal who stays in the office all day long and, and does that side of the business? What's the strength that you have? And now go find that other person. Maybe you can pay them hourly. Maybe they become a 50-50 partner. Maybe it's 25, 75, however it works out. Go find the people that possess the talents and abilities that you don't have and you're gonna go from there, okay? So that's my tip is go find your strengths, go figure out what they are and then go find somebody else that has the items that you don't have and it's gonna just skyrocket your business. So guys, there's kind of a couple random tips all over the place but the point is, is to find a small pond to fish and be that big fish and have everybody know your name, like cheers, and go crush it. Don't try to be everywhere in your state, don't try to be everywhere that your MLS serves, don't cover the whole county, Just Pick your small area, be your little fish, and you'll crush it in real estate. Just start small, keep it simple, focus on your strengths, and delegate everything else. So that's my message for you today. Guys, one other thing I want to mention to you also is it's the end of the month. It's Friday, August 31st. Yeah, today's the end of the day, the end of the month. And tomorrow, September 1st, we're going to be giving away our uh, our newsletter giveaway, our book. So every single month, we give away a business book to any of the subscribers that are on our list. Meaning we pick one. If we have 200 names, if we have 1,000 names, we pick one out of a box. That's the winner who wins the business book this month. I think we're going to be giving away Gary Keller, or not Gary Keller, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk new book called How I Crushed It. And it's free shipping delivered right to your door. So go sign up. The link is down below in this description. And you can check out how to join our newsletter. Name on there before we pick it tomorrow. So thanks for being here guys every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for following along.